Hi everybody, Peter Smock here for another version of The Way of the Life Athlete. And yes, you are a life athlete because you want to be in the best body and the best physical shape and the most vitality you've ever had for the rest of your life. So that's why you're here, or at least I hope you're here. That's why I'm sharing what I share with you. Uh, recently, had a great conversation with a guy, plays the bass, plays for a group called Pearl Jam. You ever heard of them? It's a local group in Seattle. Uh, they're kind of uh, slowly coming up. More and more people are getting to know them. Yeah, I know you know them. So anyway, Jeff Ament is uh, uh, a member of the health club that I have here in Seattle called Zoom. Works out with his trainer, Brian Buxett, and Jeff is an awesome guy. And I sat down with him and had some a few questions and kind of just shot the shit with him. I mean, basically, and talked about his life, getting into playing the bass, you know, learning the challenges of getting better, being in his body now at age 50, and uh, taking care of himself and loving to do the activities he does and how he does it. So anyway, it's a great it's a great uh, conversation with Jeff. Um, I think you'll learn a lot about Jeff and and the, kind of his tips on. Uh, you know, how to get better and how to stay, stay in your body in the best way. So check it out. It's awesome. And when I went to college, I, I played basketball there for about six weeks. And at the five week mark, uh, uh, a, group, a group of the younger players got told that you'd be playing JV ball. It was back when they had a JV program. And, uh, and I sat down with the coach, Mike Montgomery, who's now the coach at California. And he said, if you work really hard, I like, I like you know, like what, some of what you have, but you're vertically challenged. There's a few things that, you know, but he says, if you work really hard when you're a senior, I could see you getting some, being like seventh or eighth off the bench. And I was like, in my mind, like, I was like, man, if I, if I work really, really hard, I might be the eighth guy off the bench. And that, it, there was kind of a point when I'd like, when I came to college, I met some, I was an art major too, which wasn't typical of an athlete at that time. And uh, I, I was into punk rock music and all, kind of the alternative music at, of the time. And, and the, those, those two things didn't really mix very well. I couldn't really talk to the guys that I played basketball with about the music that I liked. And I couldn't really talk to the people that I played music with about basketball. It was sort of like, it was the first time in my life that I, was sort of uh, faced with like having to commit to a click because growing because growing up in a small town, I could kind of do whatever I wanted. I skateboarded, I played basketball, I played football. I kind of you know. So I would imagine that that uh, the number of, of uh, professional musicians that you run into don't have backgrounds that they were all state in, uh, in a sport and yeah. you know they actually consider going down that path. So yeah. you make it. You made a great kind of a. I don't know if it, a U-turn, but a right-hand turn. And how did how did bass playing take start grab onto you? Well, um, the the first guy that I started playing music with it was this guy John Donahue, and uh, he said, "Hey, we should start a band." And I was like, how, "Like, I, I thought being in a band was like this magical, you know, like when you think about the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and you know those bands. I, I just thought that you had to have some sort of like, you know, genetic gift." play like that and he was like nah, we'll, we'll play punk rock we'll, we'll play along to Ramones records and Clash records and and within a couple of months of playing with him he was like okay you have this week you have to write a song and I was like how do you write a song and he goes he goes study your your favorite songs that you're playing along with right now and just write a song and that was like kind of the greatest like little test that anybody could give me at the time because I, I just got hyper focused on my, my whole life sort of shifted over to this other thing and it was brand new and I was 18 years old and, and nobody was there to tell me that I couldn't do it. I had my one friend who was telling me that I could do anything. Good and, music. Yeah, yeah, and, do yeah, yeah. and uh, the, the amazing thing is, is that everything that I learned from playing team sports, I adapted that to being in a band and that, you know, that you know, saying that it wasn't a typical thing, but I think that's what allowed me to like kind of play different roles in the different bands that I've been in. And, and there's times when you're in a band with somebody who's just super talented 
and your role is to like fill the gaps. You know, it's like like a foot, like in yeah, a football team or a yeah, 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 team. yeah. Like in the basketball court, like if you have a guy who's like the, your offense, like you, you're not jacking up 20 shots a game, and and I think that's really helped me in, in terms of not feeling like I have to be like the man in any band that I've been in. You know, and, uh, and I've been I'm, I've always been comfortable with that. I've always been comfortable with like you know working really hard at different aspects. I've always sort of been the de facto manager. I've, uh, always been involved with like all the artwork and done a lot of the album covers and t-shirt designs and been involved with the lighting and how the stage looks and, and uh, so a lot a lot greater creative yeah. brain with those things and that that's the thing that's a you know that's the thing that I always tell young artists or young musicians is like if you're really serious about this like get involved with every aspect of your music or your art or whatever you're doing because you never know, you know, like, if I wouldn't have been in a band, I still would have been, like, an amazing roadie or an amazing sound engineer. Or, right. I, I would have been involved somehow. Um, so how did, how did playing the bass take off? I mean, did you find that you had a natural talent to it, or what, did you have to work your ass off to, to I, get better? I had, I had to work pretty hard. I still feel like I have to work really hard. You know, I, I, uh, I've always... Early on, in particular, I was always sort of like the weak link, so I always had to put in extra time, and that's been a good. That's been a good thing. I feel like every band that I've been in, I've sort of always been 100% engaged in every song that we've been that we've been writing or every performance that we've done, and uh, and mainly because a lot of the guys that I have played with and still play with, like, started playing when they were 10, 12 years old. I started when I was 18. I played piano when I was a kid, so that that did help me a little bit in terms of like understanding, like you know, musical theory and and songwriting and those sorts of things. But uh, and then the bass playing took over at, at, at 18. Yeah, and and initially, I, I think my friend John said you should play bass because he thought it would be easier for me to learn. But once I, you know, I I think I've always been the sort of person that. Once I get into something, I get super focused on it, and I study all aspects. And I would go see bands play, and I would just stand in front of the bass player, and I'd look at how he was playing. I'd look at his amp and how it looked. I would watch how he sang and played at the same time. Uh, sometimes I'd stay afterwards if they were friendly, and I would ask him questions about you know, what kind of strings was he using, or what, you know, how did he get this sound on that song. Or I, I think I've always been really curious, and so. Uh, did you have I, other mentors at, at that early age? You had this one guy who was very much a um, somebody who was positive and saying that you could do anything that you, you wanted to. Uh, that, there, oh. there was there was another band in town in, in Missoula at the time. Uh, the, uh, this band called Who Killed Society were kind of a new wave band that uh, I got to be really good friends with the with Randy, who was the singer and the songwriter of the band. He was probably another guy that. You know, he, he was a guy that worked really super hard at his craft and still still playing music and writing songs. And I think John and Randy were probably the first two guys. And then I, I was, the first band I was in, I was in, uh, the drummer Sergio was a jazz drummer, incredible drummer. Um, I've always been in bands with drummers that have been just phenomenal. And so being a bass player, uh, uh, you, you know, you, you you become you're the rhythm section, and so being in a band with great drummers has just made me work harder and and uh, so to, to play up to the left. You feed off Ab of each other. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So as you were, at, you know, I mean, you're improving. So you started at 18. You're playing the bass. You already had a music background of playing the piano. So what happens along the line of improvement? All of a sudden, there there were ups and downs. Were there hurdles? Were there challenges in terms of of improving, did you ever feel that, that you know, hey, I'm not going to make it, or I'm not going to be good enough, or did you even think about it? Yeah, you know, I was never really that hung up on making it. You know, I, I, I mean, I think by the time I got to Seattle, there there was a point when I was probably about 25 or 26, and I'd quit school, and I sort of had had an intention of like of going back at some point and finishing up my art degree. That that was that was sort of always in the back of my head. 
so there was a point when I was 25 or 26 where I was like, I was sort of faced with this thing, like, okay, am I gonna, am I gonna work in a restaurant the rest of my life and play music, or am I gonna go back to school and sort of try to do this other thing? And, uh, and there was, you know, probably between 24 and 28, 29, there was, there was a lot of up and down, ups and downs, and and I think a lot of it was just the pressure from the outside, you know, whether it's pressure from your family or people that you grew up with or you know I'd go back to my little town and, and people were still disappointed that I didn't play football in college or I didn't do you know you know they people you grow up with sometimes have like have their own dreams about what you should what you should do and and uh, when I would sort of explain to them what I was doing they just didn't understand that at all they didn't you know like, you're playing in a punk rock band like you're putting out these records but you're not selling any of them and you're not really making any money that doesn't make any sense to me and I'd, I'd be like, well, it's sort of like interning. Like you have to, you know, you have to do this thing for a while before you you're good enough to be at a, another level. And did that make you doubt what you were doing at all? Uh, well, it never made me doubt how much I loved it. I mean, I've, I always like once I was playing music and 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 being creative and at all the different levels. You know, again, like whether it was writing a song or making a t-shirt or making a flyer for the gig or booking a tour or whatever, like, I loved all that stuff. I, lo I, lo I love the, you know, I think, I think it really is a lot like playing team sports in that you're, you get together with the guys and you have to make these decisions and, and th that process has always been really fun to me, you know, like, and sometimes you don't, it doesn't always go the way that you want it to go, but you sort of put trust in your bandmates to, that it's going to, that they know better with this particular aspect and and that's always exciting